Welcome to Taking Care of Business on Current Radio News Talk 1180 for the best in Saturday talk radio at 1 o'clock and again on 1230 KGEO at 10 o'clock on Saturday and for the best in Wednesday talk radio on 1410 KERI Wednesday at 1 o'clock and now Clay we're in New Mexico on 1000 KKIM. I guess we're not the best. You didn't say that. Uh, well, that's true. We're not the best in Mex- New Mexico, but we will be. Your host is Clay Kerner, and I'm Marty Pay. And behind the big board is our producer, Greg Held. Hey, Clay, that was a great show uh, Easter weekend with uh, Pastor David Jeremiah. Excellent pastor. You know, he's on the radio, I, I guess he said, 6,000 times a day. 6,001. Well, yeah, that's right, including us. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, David doesn't take us. <laughs> doesn't take much for us. <laughs> uh, then we had Lily Marsh with Honor Flight. That's a great program. Getting our World War II veterans to uh, D.C. and uh, you know we're losing them at the rate of a thousand a day. That's that's awful tough to swallow. But it's it's a great program getting these guys back there. Well, eventually they'll start taking the Vietnam vets. That's true. Then they'll get to our era, which is the Vietnam vets. Yeah. Well, that's your era. What do you mean, I'm, mine? I'm still in World War II. <laughs> yeah, so I was going to be kind. <laughs> Beat you to the punch. <laughs> hey, who's, we have who's it, our guest today? <laughs> well, we have an incredible show. One of those shows that you you really want to do in radio. I mean, it's going to be a fantastic show. In the second half, we have the chairman and editor-in-chief of Forbes Media, Steve Forbes. But in the first half, drum roll, please, we have one of the most inspirational athletes that I've ever, ever seen uh, or ever heard of. Uh, he was a pitcher for the Giants. Incredible story. He's also the co-founder with his wife, Jan, of Endurance, a great ministry, Dave Dravecki. Dave, welcome to Taking Care of Business. Uh, thank you so much, guys. It's a pleasure being with you. It's great having you on. You know, I, I have to ask you the obvious question first. You know, we're, as we talked about it off the air, we're kind of in... Uh, in the middle between Dodgerland and Giantland here, so I have to be careful. I'm going to be treading on somebody's toes. Hmm. But um, w- what do you think this year? I guess what the the Giants lost the opener to the Dodgers, if I remember right. Right. The other day. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. You know, I think. Um, you know, well, first of all, I think it's great that uh, the Dodgers have got an infusion of new life with Magic Johnson and a new ownership. Um, because I think it's great for baseball. Um, you know, this is a, a storied franchise, and these are two ball clubs that date all the way back to New York City and and great rivalries there. And, you know, when you look at the Giants and their 131-year history and then the Dodgers' history and uh, this rivalry, um, opening day and, you know, the incredible pitching job by Clayton Kershaw was just amazing. But then, um, as we know, is, uh, you know, the, the tradition these days in San Francisco, um, they have uh, more than just one a great pitcher. Mm-hmm. And they've got a, a number of guys that they're throwing out there night after night, which is absolutely amazing. And so in game two and game three, you know, you saw, um, and, and game one, Matt Cain pitched a great game and, and shut him down um, until uh, the bullpen. Uh, came in and unfortunately, um, you know, they ended up on the losing end. But um, uh, both game two and game three, uh, the pitching once again came through. And and last night uh, there was a little bit of an insurgence of offense for the Giants. So um, it's going to make for a great season. This mm-hmm. is always the fun part of the year because everybody has a, a, a clean slate, so to speak, and and a fresh start. And uh, you know, you only uh, you're not going to know what's going to happen. We can all guess. I hope that the Giants would end up on top at the end of the season, but it's a you know a long year with 162 games and health plays probably the most important aspect of the whole thing. Definitely, we we had George Will on Dave a couple of weeks ago, and and the last question I asked him, I said, uh, I said I'm going to throw you a curve here. I, I said, you know, the Dodgers uh, are spending a lot of money. You know, what do you think about that? Uh, do they have a chance? And he had a great answer. His comment was, "Well, it's like the government. You can throw a lot of money at it, and nothing will happen." <laughs> that's a wonderful response is that a great uh, line um, I couldn't agree with him more by the way hey wait a minute (laughs) that comes as a giant fan right (laughs) and former giant player well for for, uh, those of our listeners that don't know your story tell us about about, uh, your story as a a pitcher for the Giants and and your career well um, you know I was traded in 1987 from the San Diego Padres over to the Giants on the 4th of July 
And uh, I'll never forget the feelings during that time because, you know, it was kind of bittersweet. Um, you know, you're leaving a ball club that you thought you were going to play for your entire career, and they've, they've traded you, um, you know, which in essence was a message, we don't want you anymore. And and that was really hard. But then all of a sudden we go to the Giants, Craig Lefferts and Kevin Mitchell and I, and um, they're saying you guys are the last pieces of the puzzle. Um, to create what we hope is a very competitive ball club that will win at the end of the season. And so we were welcomed with open arms, and it was just a wonderful, wonderful experience. Uh, 87, I pitched the two best games of my career in postseason play against the Cardinals and was looking forward to 1988 being a great year. Opened up against the Dodgers, uh, defeated them um, 5-1 to one on opening day, facing Fernando Valenzuela in 1988 and uh, thought I was going to win 20 games that year. And, and as we all know, the Dodgers went on to win the World Series, and uh, by September I was being diagnosed with cancer in my left pitching arm and told that outside of a miracle I would never pitch again. And uh, that was devastating news. Um, it was uh, very difficult to, to think of not playing baseball, but to be honest with you, at the time when I heard cancer, all I was thinking about was my life. I was 32 years old, and... Um, I was, you know, married and had two little kids, and I didn't want to see my life come to an end. And, and so it was an extremely difficult time. Um, but at the same time, I also knew that uh, there were some wonderful doctors and people that were going to be caring for me, and God would use all those people ultimately to help me get back to the mound on August 10th, 1989, um, after going through that intense surgery all the way back in October of 88. And uh, that day I went up against the Cincinnati Reds and we defeated them 4-3. to three And I thought I was back in the saddle and everything was going to be good. And, and uh, coming on the tail end of, you know, uh, a contract and looking forward to renegotiating a new one. And five days later I'm pitching in Montreal and in the sixth inning I throw a fastball to Tim Raines and my left arm snaps in half. And and uh, needless to say, my career came to an end, and then we discovered that the cancer had reoccurred, and there were more surgeries, uh, radiation therapy, a staph infection, and, uh, and then it all culminated with the loss of my left arm and shoulder to save my life. And uh, so that took place June 18th of 1991, and, and I thought, you know, you get rid of my arm and my shoulder and, and the cancer, and you get rid of all my problems. And uh, unfortunately, um, that wasn't the case because I ended up going through a lot of uh, difficult times after that, just dealing with the identity crisis. We're having a conversation with Dave Dravecki, retired pitcher, author, and motivational speaker. You know, Dave, this is Clay, and I'm always interested more in the personal aspects of someone rather than necessarily their career. And so I'd like to know what's going on in your life now. What are you doing? What have you have been doing? And what are your future plans? Well, you know, I have uh, I've had a unique privilege of being able to tell my story. Um, after all the stuff took place and the identity crisis, we, we worked through that um, over about 30 months of counseling and, and just um, dealing with different issues. Um, God opened a door for me to share my story and, and to um, bring encouragement and hope into uh, people's lives uh, who might hear that story. And so for 21 years now, that's what I've been doing, traveling the country, uh, telling my story. And then um, at the same time, 21 years ago, my wife and I started Endurance and uh, really wanted to just reach out and encourage people that were going through similar things as us um, in the same way that we had been encouraged. Um, a very simple approach. Um, you know, we, we work with about 500 families a year, and what we decided to do was use our story and to send that out in book form as, as a gift uh, to families that needed encouragement, and they could read our story or, you know, listen to it on tape and and so we've been, in essence, doing that for the last 21 years um, through endurance. And then that's just been a wonderful, wonderful privilege, you know, to be able to step onto someone's sacred ground in the midst of their pain and suffering and to uh, see God use 
a story um, that is not perfect by any means. Um, it's a story of brokenness um, and pain and suffering, but also a story of hope because of Jesus. And to be able to use that story to encourage others has been a wonderful privilege. And then uh, two years ago, um, the Giants, uh, I approached the Giants and said, you guys have been so wonderful to our family over the years. Is there any way that uh, we could begin a working relationship? I'd love to do some stuff for you. And so they were obviously wide open to the idea. And um, so for the last two years and starting again this year, um, I've been working for them. Um, and I've been just basically doing public relations stuff. I'm considered one of their ambassadors, and I get to tell the giant story and my story woven through it um, as I go out and, and do things for the giants. Um, so it's it's been, we're in a sweet place. Um, it has been absolutely amazing to see the, the wonderful opportunities that have been presented to us um, and, uh, you know, I remember um, uh, Andre uh, Thornton. Andre uh, Thornton wrote a book called Triumph, Born of Tragedy. And uh, Dave, we got to take I a hard really break. I feel like that's it. Yeah, D- Dave, we got to take a hard break. So hold on one second. Tell, tell us about that when we come back, okay? Okay. We'll be gotcha. back in a moment on Taking Care of Business on Current Radio News Talk 1180.